Hey everyone, welcome back to the second episode in this series where we're making a basic game with the WPF format using .xaml and .c -sharp. Today, we are going to be adding collisions to our basic game. So to get started, we're going to create a new rectangle. And we're going to set its width to be something like 200. We're going to set its height to be something like 50. We're going to set... Uh, Nothing else, we're just going to end it off. And there we go, we have our little blue box. I'm going to drag this over to the center. So it looks like this. Then, afterwards, we're going to add one thing to both of these, the player and the new rectangle. We're going to add a new thing, it's called a tag. This tag is, for the player, we're going to call it user, so you can find it in later episodes. And here in the tag on the rectangle we're going to call this thing's tag collide now that's all you're gonna need here in the dot exam file all right now head over here C sharp file now we're gonna create a new function so hit enter twice private void we're gonna call this collide we're gonna pass a string we're gonna set that to be our direction we're gonna end it off as function and then afterwards we're gonna say for each we're gonna say var x in game screen dot children dot type of or of type and we're gonna pass in as rectangle within the less than and greater than signs. So now we have this and we're going to say if we're gonna pass as string x dot tag is equal to collide. Afterwards we're going to say rect player hb for hitbox is equal to new rect. We're going to pass some options such as the canvas dot get left of player. We're going to say afterwards the canvas dot get top of player. Then we're going to pass in its height and width, so player.width and player.height. There you go. Let's end this off with a semicolon. Afterwards, we'll come down here. We're going to make a new rect. Copy the previous line for the player and change all the player variable names to x. And we're going to rename this thing to, to collide. And there we go. Now, the recs are created, and so hitboxes are now active. We can come down here and say, if player hitbox dot intersects with, we're going to say, to collide. Afterwards, we're going to come down. We're going to say, if, if dir is equal to x, then we're going to do this. Otherwise, so make sure it's an if else. Now, I just now noticed, come back up here. If you have a space, get rid of it now. Here within the X section, we're going to go canvas. If you're lucky enough, it should look like this. Unless that happens, we're going to do canvas.get left. And we're going to make sure that these are player instead. And afterwards, we're just going to subtract speed X. Make sure everything's capitalized correctly also. Then come down here into another line, and we're going to say speed X is equal to zero. We're going to copy in this line, and we're going to paste it. And we're just going to change this to a adding function. We're going to change this to speed y. And we're going to change this to speed y also. Now, how should we implement this, you might be asking. Well, come back up here to where you see where we move the player itself. We're going to create a new line underneath. And we're going to say collide and the direction that we want to move. And we'll check for collision. And then afterwards, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say Y. And if we hit the play test button, it appears I might have missed something up. As you can see, this is not meant to be get left. This is meant to be get top. So now if you do that, everything should be working perfectly fine. You can slam the player as hard as you can into this, and still, you will not be able to pass through. As you can see, 
And that is it for today's episode. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. And it, well, it very much helps me know that you guys actually enjoy watching these videos. And other words, I will see you in the next episode of the series. See ya!